Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, January 30th, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Just a quick update on the Microsoft Exchange of vulnerability and the privilege escalation exploit uh, that it brings along with it. Yesterday I talked about it already and one thing I said we didn't have yet was a good way to detect if you're under attack. Well, uh, figured it out uh, thanks uh, to readers that also commented on this. And the thing to look for is event code 4624. You should see then a logon type three and an author package NTLM. This will then detect the account, the NTLM relay at part of the attack. So that's where the attacker actually tries then to escalate privileges. Another good event uh, to look for is 5136. This one is the event that'll show up if the X control lists have been modified. So that would be after the attack succeeded. Boyan added details regarding this uh, to the diary post from yesterday. But we've also got a sort of a f interesting, little bit a different good old phishing attack today. Now, it arrived as an email as they often do and the lure here was an attachment that promised final closing statement. So someone who is just about to close on a house, of course, would be at risk here. And the intent is not really to infect you here. The link of this PDF actually just goes to a legitimate uh, OneDrive page. And from there, well, you're being then redirected to the attacker's page. The attacker actually went through the trouble to get something that looks a little bit OneDrive like the host name they're using is Drive Document One, but they made a crucial mistake here in that they weren't ready for IPv6. They do deploy as many of uh, these phishing pages, a blacklist where they're sort of trying to lock out researchers, security companies from their phishing page to make it more difficult for us to look at a page and actually uh, block it and uh, get it shut down. Well, in this case, uh, because I was coming from an IPv6 address, it failed the IP block list check and just threw a PHP error. So I never got to the point where I would be able to enter my OneDrive password. Now, the reason for this, of course, is that they would like to get your Outlook 365 password. With that, they would be able to monitor your email traffic. And uh, if you happen to just be about to close on a house, whether that's a realtor, whether that's the buyer, well, uh, this may enable them, them to inject fake messages, giving you a wrong account number to transfer money to. And Apple has found a workaround for the FaceTime vulnerability that allows users to listen in on the receiving end before the receiving end actually has accepted the call. Well, part of the problem here was how group FaceTime was implemented. What Apple decided to do now is to just disable group FaceTime on its servers. So at this point, nobody can use group FaceTime. This should mitigate this vulnerability. And I assume Apple is still working on a patch that should be released. And once the patch is released, I would expect Apple to re-enable group FaceTime. Normal FaceTime 101 still works and is not affected by this vulnerability. And one feature Microsoft introduced in Outlook 365 in order to protect its users was what they commonly refer to as safe links. The way it works is that in emails that you're receiving via Outlook 365, all URLs are being replaced with URLs that point back to Microsoft and that page at Microsoft will then forward you 
to the original destination. So a little bit uh, like short links, only that these links aren't really short. The idea here is that if later a link turns out to be malicious, then Microsoft can disable this forwarding feature. And of course, that will then block the user from actually reaching the malicious site. Nice feature, but apparently it had some issues today and was broken. Users clicking on these links received HTTP 503 errors, just that service is unavailable. Now, if you remove the first part of the URL, just the first label in the host name, which is something like NA and then a two digit number, then you were still able to get to the original URL, but uh, you got a certificate error. So really not sort of a valid workaround necessarily. So if you ran into this earlier today, uh, that uh, was a Microsoft uh, flaw. I think it has been fixed now, but haven't really seen an ultimate resolution yet. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.